Good morning. This is the first in what will be a very, very short unit, but as we start on this new unit, I just want you to keep in mind that the test for this unit will likely be after spring break. It's going to be in the window between spring break and the close of grades. So as you are taking notes on this material and practicing through the homework, I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind. Um, it's just how things are paced. It's not what I would pick. It's not ideal, but um, that does look like it's like what it's going to be. Um, typically, students do not have a huge issue with operations on functions, and today we're going to cover adding and subtracting functions. The next lesson will be multiplying, then we'll do dividing, and then we'll talk about the domain when we are operating with functions. For our example problems, we are going to work with the same two functions for the uh, for the examples, at least for the first few examples, we're going to work with f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x uh, minus 3. And you might hear a cat in the background. He just crawled out of, um, I think I just woke him up. Oh, he just jumped up on, no, no, no. And now he's walking on my notes. Um, <laughs> Okay, and g of x is equal to 2x plus 5. Now, mostly uh, for adding and subtracting, there actually isn't anything new in terms of skills. This is just going to be new in terms of notation so that you are able to interpret the notation and know what the notation is asking you to do. So for adding, this is what the notation looks like. So we have uh, this, and so here's what you would be asked to do. So you would be given two functions, like f of x and g of x, and they would usually be given at the beginning of the problem somewhere. And then you would see directions that looked like this. And so you would see f plus g in parentheses, and then you'd probably have the of x um, to the side. Now, how we would read that out loud is f plus g of x. Okay, I'll even um, write that in here. Okay, so f plus g of x. Now you can always um, el uh, eliminate the of x if that bothers you, and so you will often see, okay, or often see, or you have the the ability to do this yourself, just write f plus g. And what that means is you're going to take function f and add it to function g. So what that notation means, okay, so we have the notation and then we have the meaning of the notation is simply this, f of x plus g of x, or again, simply f plus g. And you can kind of see the connection there. Uh, a lot of students, especially in Algebra 2, are bothered by the of x. Uh, they see that as multiplication, so they see that as like distributing the x through, and I understand that it looks like that, but that is not what that notation means. Um, it simply means that you are going to add the two functions together. So if you are prone to mistakes where you start like multiplying these like extra x's into the problem, and, and I will I will note that on your homework. So if you're prone to that mistake, if you go back into focus or you open up the homework assignment that you've submitted, you will notice that I write like a note to you saying this is not what this means. And so you want to make sure that you're reading those notes and you're correcting those mistakes if you make them and then finding ways to, to get around it. So what does this mean in terms of the actual operation? So if you were given the two functions that we started with, the x squared plus 2x minus 3 and g of x is equal to uh, 2x plus 5, and you were asked to do f plus g of x, what you would do is simply do f of x plus g of x. Now, uh, so f of x is x squared plus 2x minus 3, and g of x is 2x plus 5. Notice that there's no like x multiplied in there, okay? So there is no like x in a parenthesis that carries down. And I can often find, you know, identify students who are not paying attention because they will start to do stuff like that. Um, and so if you're paying attention and you're copying down the examples so that you're practicing like what it looks like in writing, then you're a lot less prone to make those mistakes. Now, um, the parentheses here are what I have referred to in the past as cosmetic. You know, we've talked about that before with say like the complex numbers, adding and subtracting complex numbers and stuff like that, um, where they are there for the look, 
but they don't actually influence the algebra at all. And so in this case, the parentheses are simply there to create a visual separation between the f of x and the g of x, but because it's adding, they don't serve an algebraic purpose. You are free to omit those parentheses when you combine them uh, or add them. And so really, all this is is an exercise in combining like terms. So I'm going to abbreviate that with that by CLT, which I think I've done before. So combine like terms. So you've got your x squared out front. Um, then you have uh, a positive 2x plus another positive 2x, which would give you 4x. And we've got like a negative 3 and a positive 5, which would be positive 2. And so the uh, answer to that particular question would be x squared plus 4x plus 2. I will point out that if you have a propensity for trying to use external aids to help you with your homework, the way these questions are presented usually circumvent that, like, or... I don't think circumvent is quite the right word, but they'll they'll hinder you in that because the actual functions are given somewhere else in the problem and the directions for what to do with those functions are given in another location. And so you usually don't get them all in one place, which means they would not be all in one picture. And so you still have to know what you're supposed to do with the functions. The good news is this is not like really difficult. And so hopefully you won't have any issues with that. With your subtraction... Okay, so um, how did I phrase that before? Adding. So we'll we'll make sure I'm consistent with this. So with subtracting, uh, you would have a similar notation. So once you get the hang of this, um, math is consistent, so it does all work the same way. You would see f minus g of x. Okay, and again, that's how you would say it, f minus g of x, where f minus g is what you're going to do to the two functions, and x is indicating what they are functions of. It just pretty much means this is the variable in there. The meaning of this notation is f of x minus g of x. Again, that is not multiplication. Okay, I'll put that in big capital letters here. It is not multiplication multiplication. There we go. Uh, it is not multiplication and therefore it is not distribution. I do understand that it looks that way, but it's not. Uh, and you are always free to simply write f minus g. So if the function notation bothers you, it is okay to just write f minus g. So let's go back to our sample functions that we're using for this particular lesson. And those were f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3 and g of x equals 2x minus, uh, plus 5. And apply them and, and work through the example here. So we would have f minus g of x, which you would interpret as f of x minus g of x. Okay, And you are free to skip. Okay, You don't have to write that out. Uh, that is your teacher emphasizing what the notation means for the purpose of teaching. <laughs> and it is not necessary for you to keep writing it out. Uh, in this case, f of x is x squared plus 2x minus 3. And g of x is 2x plus 5. And I'll make a little note out here. The parentheses are not cosmetic here. Okay, They are not just for... Uh, creating that visual separation between the two functions. In this case, because you are subtracting the g of x, um, you actually need to remember that you're subtracting the entire thing. It's exactly the same thing we did when we did the complex numbers. So in this case, when you remove the parentheses, you will need to remember that you are subtracting everything inside the parentheses. Uh, and then, as before, you are combining like terms. So we have x squared. Uh, in this case, we have 2x minus 2x, which is going to cause the linear term to drop out. And we have minus 3 minus 5, which is minus 8. And there is our answer to this particular problem. I don't know why it kind of drifted to the left a little bit on my screen. Sorry about that. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to adding and subtracting functions. Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, wow, that was... Pretty easy. So uh, next up is to practice. So I'm going to give you two other uh, functions to practice with. 
and, uh, in, in, uh, some directions for what I want you to do. And then we'll take some time in class to do that and then go over it. And that'll be a wrap on the lesson for today. So it'll be a pretty short lesson, which probably means that you'll have some time to get started on your homework. All right. So here are the practice problems. We're going to work with a quadratic and a cubic for our example or practice. F of X is equal to two X squared plus, uh, f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1, and g of x is equal to x to the third, make that equal a little better, x to the third plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 3. And you're going to do three problems with these two functions. You're going to add them, so f plus g of x, then subtract them f minus g of x, and then subtract them in the other direction, g minus f of x. And there's a note at the bottom here that says, look for a, co a connection between number two and number three. So subtraction, we know, is not commutative. It does make a difference which order you're subtracting, and you do want to make sure you're paying attention to the direction you're subtracting. But there is a connection between uh, the direction, like when you're subtracting them, when you look at your answers, they're going to be related to each other. And being observant and noticing what that relationship is is, can work in your favor later on. So at this point, we'll uh, stop the video and we'll go over this in however I determine that we're going to go over it in class. Uh, or for those of you that are watching this video on your own or for additional review, uh, I, you can pause the video, work the problems out, and I will work them out in the video uh, for your uh, review purposes. Okay, I am going to attempt to do these on one screen. Um, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's a really dumb idea. That's not going to work. Uh, we're going to have to do these on on different screens. So, so oops. Uh, so we'll start with, actually, I'm going to do a thing where I copy the ink. So just it, you won't even notice I'm doing it. Okay, I wanted to copy the... Functions over onto the next couple of slides in the presentation before I mark them up with the actual solution. Um, you probably didn't even notice I did that. So for the first one, we're adding them together, and I'm going to model in this that you don't need to have the of x there. Okay, so if that bothers you, or like more importantly, if it causes you to to get something wrong, um, it's just not necessary. You don't compromise anything in the integrity of the problem or the reasoning of the problem by leaving the of X out. And so I strongly encourage you that if you are just personally uncomfortable with it or it causes you to get stuff wrong, that you just leave it out. It's, it's not one of those things that's super important. And uh, a lot of times you'll see teachers and math books leave it out. Um, so it really is kind of optional. I do want you to see it. I want you to know what it means. Uh, but I don't want it to cause a problem for you. So for our f, we have uh, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And for our g, we have x to the third plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 3. Of course, the parentheses in this case are cosmetic. And as long as you recognize that they are cosmetic... Uh, I'm completely okay with you not writing them, okay? Like, because what you notice happened there was it was really a lot of extra writing where you have them in the groups and then they're not in the groups. Uh, the only thing that I'm concerned about is that you do recognize what they're there for, which is simply a visual to create like a visual separation, but that you totally understand when they are doing something algebraic versus when they're not doing something algebraic. Now, as we go through the process of combining like terms, I'm going to try to put this in standard form, which means that I want the highest exponent over to the left. So if it's possible for me to order it as I'm doing the adding, then that's what I'll do. So I'm going to take that x to the third, and I'm going to write that first. And then I'll draw a little line through that just so I'm aware that I've already taken care of it. Um, then I have uh, 2x squared plus 4x squared, which is going to give me 6x squared, and I'll mark those off as well. Uh, then I have negative 3x plus 2x, which is going to give me negative 1x, or simply negative x, which is fine. And then the last one there positive 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, 
And we mark that off. And so by marking them off, I know I haven't accidentally left something out. That becomes a lot more important in the next lesson when we're multiplying. It just becomes, yeah, easier to leave something out or not see it. But um, there's your adding. Next problem is subtracting. And again, I'll model the leaving off of the of X so you can just see what that looks like. And in fact, you will sometimes uh, see like up here instead of um, F of X, you will just simply see like F and G. And um, that's a little bit sloppier, but it is is pretty safe to assume that we know what, what F and G are functions of because we can see it in the equations themselves. So um, just like a heads up though, that's a, that's getting a little sloppy with the notation. But when when indicating the operations, it's totally okay to leave it off. Okay, in this case, the parentheses are not cosmetic. Uh, now, on your homework, um, you'll notice that the next step that I'm doing is the removal of the parentheses where I pretty much flip the sign uh, of everything inside because we're subtracting, and subtracting means to add the opposite. And so the opposite of positive x cubed is negative x cubed. Positive 4x squared is negative 4x squared. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Um, now, you can actually do this in one step. So a lot of you will be very comfortable with you copy down the first function, and then you'll just remember to flip the sign when you're writing down the next one. On your Here's what I would say. On your homework uh, that's fairly low risk, go ahead and do that. On your test make yourself go through that extra step because the test is higher stakes. Um, you will lose more points on the test for making a mistake in that step than you ever would on your homework where you might not lose any points at all. And so uh, that would just be my word of advice. Just know when you're dealing with a higher stakes problem. And if it's higher stakes, make sure that you're taking the time to be more thorough with it. Uh, all right. So again, with the ordering, I have negative X to the third. Remember that that is a negative. Um, this time we have positive 2x squared and negative 4x squared, which uh, when we combine them gives us negative 2x squared. And marking that off, uh, we have negative 3x and negative 2x, which when combined give us negative 5x. And this time we have positive 1 and positive 3 which gives us a positive four, and we are confident that we have taken care of everything. Now, just make a special note of the answer there. Negative x to the third minus 2x squared minus 5x plus four. Just kind of make a note of that. Concentrate on it for a moment. And let's do the last one. G minus F. I didn't really give you time to concentrate on it for a second. Sorry about that. I get on a roll. I just start going. All right. G minus F. So this time we have x to the third plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 3, and we're subtracting the f from that. And when I go to remove the parentheses, of course, I will be flipping the sign because subtraction means adding the opposite. And now we combine. Now, this one's convenient. The uh, x to the third is already out front. That's that's nice. We don't have to hunt it down in the middle there. Uh, now we have positive 4x squared minus 2x squared, which would give us positive 2x squared. Marking those off. Uh, positive 2x plus 3x, which is uh, 5x. And we'll mark those off. And then this time we have negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4. Now, um, let's go ahead and compare uh, these two answers. What I did was I copied the two answers over. Uh, so we have f minus g and g minus f and what the answers are. And when you can see them lined up, it, it actually makes it easier to see. And uh, I'll take a moment here and I'll just... 
point out to you that sometimes recopying something, copying something near each other, lining stuff up, the visual organization of something on the page can make patterns easier or harder to see. And so you want to be aware of that. Sometimes when you're asked to look for a pattern, things don't necessarily just jump out at us. Sometimes we need to rewrite it, reorder it, look at it a different way. Um, all of those things are part of like spotting patterns and it's not just true in math. It's true in pretty much anything. So when you um, line them up like this, what I hope you can see is that the signs of everything are flipped. Uh, so you have like a negative x to the third and a positive x to the, uh, to the third, negative 2x squared and a positive 2x squared, negative 5x, positive 5x, and then a positive 4 and a negative 4. Um, and so that when you switch the order of the subtraction, the sign of everything in the answer flips. And I'll, I'll write that, that out um, for you. So when we flip the order of the subtraction, all the signs, like of all terms, are flipped. Now, that just might come in handy somewhere to, to just know that that is how it works. Sometimes you'll be working a problem and you'll look at your answer choices and you can see your answer choice there, but all the signs are flipped. And when you're aware that that can happen when you flip the order of the, of the subtraction, it might help you spot a mistake. It might help you um, just get a text message notification. <laughs> it might help uh, navigate your way through the problem in a different way. So it's just one of those observations that's worth noting. Now on your homework, your homework is going to include adding, subtracting, and multiplying. You are at this point free to go through your homework and take a look at all of the adding and subtracting problems so that you can ask questions on them tomorrow. You can attempt the multiplication because you know that math is consistent and that the multiplying isn't going to do something dramatically different uh, from adding and subtracting, but just be aware that there's a lesson coming on that tomorrow. You do not have to answer any of the questions on the domain because we're going to cover the domain in a separate lesson.